Configuring Cisco PSTN Dial Peers, the Micro Nugget. Dial peers are what define the routing table for your voice over IP calls. It's what tells the router when it receives a phone call and this number is dialed, here's what you do with it. Now this can be really useful for home and for business and wherever else you want to set up voice over IP because this leads to what I would call phase one voice over IP where you keep your old analog handsets, you keep your old analog phone line and you put a voice router in the middle of it all. Why would you do that? Well, because then you can actually define routing plans for your analog devices. You can assign phone numbers. It's like you have a mini PBX system here. You can take incoming calls and forward them to whatever extension you want. And I would say the biggest piece of it all is this leads you into what I would then call phase two voice over IP, where you start to migrate away from that stuff. You set up a power over ethernet switch, get some IP phones plugged in, eliminate the analog phones. Uh, you then move the analog connection here into maybe a high speed internet internet connection or a WAN link that has managed quality of service on it and you set up what's called a SIP trunk with a PSTN carrier to then combine all of your voice and data over one really efficient network connection. That's the why. So how do you do it and what do you buy and all that kind of stuff? Well, let me give you the, the flyby scoop on that. If you want to buy just a lab environment, I would really suggest like a 2611XM. It's really cheap. This guy is trying to rake somebody over. That is way too much money for a Cisco 2611. Uh, but you want to have some voice modules in there. You want some FXO ports, which connect to the uh, office. That's Foreign Exchange Office. And then we have FXS ports over here, which, uh, which connect to... Oh, look at that. Even Zoom capabilities. FX, oh, it was uh, FXS on the right, FXO on the left. That's amazing. Uh, so that'll let you connect foreign exchange station devices, the analog devices on there. Uh, there's all kinds of different routers that you can buy. So let's set them up. I've got a Cisco UC520, which is kind of a dream router for setting this sort of thing up. I'm going to uh, literally just brought it up, no configuration whatsoever. I'm going to go into uh, global config mode and do a show voice port summary. You can see right there, I've got four FXS, four X FXO. I actually have phones plugged into each one of these ports specifically. And I'm gonna go in and do a uh, dial peer voice and type in a tag. Now this tag can be any number that you want. Sometimes people make it match the extension number, so I'll do that. 1101 and it's going to be a POTS, meaning plain old telephone service. This is the old school, not voice over IP. It's the old stuff. So I'm going to say destination pattern is going to be 1101 and I'm going to send it out port 000. So I have a phone that can ring. Now it's that easy. I can then go into uh, voice, you know, create a 1102, assign that to voice port uh, 0 slash 0 slash 1 one, which is the second voice port, uh, and I'll do destination pattern 1102. And just like that, I can now pick up these phones, and let me, here, let me do this. I'll do a uh, debug uh, VOIP dial peer. So you can actually watch what I'm, I'm doing. I'm going to go on speakerphone on uh, one of these devices, if it is indeed plugged in, and type in 1102. Ta-da! I now have a connection going between these two analog phones. Dial peers are now... I'm, I'm going to lift that up and hang that up. I don't want to keep hearing that. So, so you can see it actually matched. It shows I matched an outgoing dial peer 1102. Fantastic. Now, what about the PSTN? Well, we need to create dial peers with wildcards for that. Now, I live in North America, so it's going to be this easy. I'm going to type in dial peer uh, voice, and let's do... I'll just do 90. And it's going to be POTS because it's an analog on analog phone line that I have plugged in there. I'm going to do the destination pattern. Uh, now I'm going to do, you know, in, in North America we have long distance. So 9 because I dial 9 to get an outside line. I don't have to do that, but most people do that. Um, and then I'll say, okay, the, ne the, next pattern, the next digit will be a 1. That's going to be long distance. Then I'm going to use a wild card of a dot, which represents any digit. So there's my three-digit area codes, my three-digit prefix, and my four digit suffix. Just like that, I now have long distance uh, dialing set up and I'll send it out port zero slash one slash zero. Now I'm gonna add another command. You can see it over there, number four, four digits, because one of the bonus features, if you want to call it that, of Cisco is it will actually strip any digit that is explicitly typed in, meaning a non-wildcard digit on a pot style peer. It does that. So for instance, if you use a nine, it'll strip that off before it sends it to the PSTN. But in this case, I'm like, ah, I don't want it to strip off the one. So I want to forward digits 11, which will forward the right 11 most digits on there. Exit back out. I'm going to go into dial pure voice and let's do 91 pots and this time I'm going to add 10 digit dialing. Now this is going to be a little bit fun. 
Uh, so let's just say local, uh, and I'll say the destination pattern will be 9, but this time I'm going to do bracket 2 through 9. This is a wildcard that represents a single digit, any number between 2 through 9, because I don't want it to overlap with the 1, because that's our long distance. Then I'll do dot, 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 that's my area code. Oh, oh wait, wait a sec, that's one digit. So this is my three digits. We've got 2 through 9, and then dot, dot, that's my area code, dot, 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 that's my prefix, dot, 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 that's my suffix. I now have 10-digit dialing going out port 0 slash 1 slash 0. I can now pick up the phone and actually place a phone call uh, to any one of those. I don't have to do a four digits here because it will uh, automatically do that. But wait a sec, what about receiving a phone call? What about when somebody makes an incoming call? Well, right now the router doesn't know where to send it, so I'm going to add in an incoming PLAR configuration. The way I do that is go under voice port 0 slash 1 slash 0 and do connection PLAR, which says private line automatic ring down, uh, and let's do 1102. What that means is as soon as I uh, receive a call, as soon as essentially this goes off hook, it's going to make 1102 ring. This is typically used for emergency phones. For example, I could go under uh, voice dash port 0 slash 0 slash 0 and do the same thing, connection PLAR 1102. So as soon as I lift this up, watch this, I'm going to lift up the handset. Uh, you see that? Hang it up. Lift it up again. Hang it up. And, and I fill my screen with debugs because it's showing me, oh, you placed the call from 1101, 1102, brrr, it's scrolling across the screen. So the beauty is now I could actually receive a call from the outside world on my FXO port and it routes it to an internal extension. Amazing. That's configuring dial peers for the PSTN in a nutshell.